Los Angeles has its own literal flavor, a set of airborne molecules as distinctive as any foods. I got my first taste of LA flavor in September of 1969, when I arrived in Pasadena to study astronomy at the California Institute of Technology. I took a few breaths and smelled that distinctive, acrid mix of citrus blossoms, green lawns, car exhaust, and ozone. After a short while, I realized that I could actually see LA air. The Mount Wilson Observatory sits atop a 5,700-foot peak, 10 miles from the Caltech campus. I had been in classes for two weeks before I caught my first glimpse of the observatory buildings or the bulk of the mountain itself. The flavor of L.A. was in the way. I happened to arrive in the L.A. area just as smog levels were reaching their post-war peak before pollution controls began to have an effect. Those controls were largely the work of a Dutch-born Caltech chemist, Dr. Ari Jan Hagenschmidt, who was among the first to determine what smog actually was and what caused it, and who became the founding chairman of the California Air Resources Board. Dr. Hagenschmidt was in a position to make those fundamental discoveries about the noxious stuff that flavored L.A. air because he was a pioneer in the study of the delicious stuff that flavors food and drink. To study the tiny traces of airborne chemicals that our noses detect as aromas, Dr. Hagenschmidt would place the chopped fruit or sample of wine in a vacuum chamber and draw out their aromatic vapors, then condense the vapors in sections of glass tubing, progressively cooled to temperatures as low as minus 180 degrees Fahrenheit. From 6,000 pounds of raw material, this vacuum distillation might yield 80 grams of aromatic concentrate, a few tablespoons, but enough to perform chemical analyses and study the tiny traces of airborne chemicals that our noses detect as aromas. One of his colleagues recalled that when Dr. Hagenschmidt performed the same extreme cooling on nothing but L.A. air, the cold trap yielded what he described as a couple drops of dark brown, vile-smelling liquid. These drops were a condensate of L.A.'s ambient airborne molecules, and they too could be analyzed to determine their composition. Thanks to the work of Dr. Hagenschmidt and his legions of successors, the flavor of L.A. air is now far more subtle than it was in the early 1970s. Though Dr. Hagenschmidt made the connection between the flavor of a city and the flavor of foods, he doesn't seem to have considered the possibility of flavoring foods with cities. That leap was made in 2011 in pollution-plagued Bangalore, India, by the Center for Genomic Gastronomy, an international group of artists, designers, and collaborators co-founded by Zach Denfeld and Catherine Kramer. Denfeld was provoked, I was happy to learn, by a sentence of mine that describes egg foams and meringues as preparations that harvest the air they're made in. Denfeld and Kramer recruited students to whip up meringues in different neighborhoods of Bangalore and make a collection that would map the city's air quality. The webpage for the resulting smog tasting project proposes that meringues could be tested for various pollutants and could also be served as Trojan horse sweets. In its words, with the smog meringue, take a snapshot of the air quality in any location. Serve it to politicians or business owners for a blind taste test of the air quality in their area. The tragedy of the commons never tasted so good. The smog tasting project soon caught the eye of Nicola Twilley, a New York-based writer, artist, podcaster, and author of the blog Edible Geography. She gave the flavor of air its inevitable name, Airwar and began working with the Center for Genomic Gastronomy to explore the idea further. The Airwarists have taken the smog meringue project high-tech and global. With the help of scientists at the University of California at Riverside, they designed and built a portable smog chamber for cooking up replicas of polluted air from all over the world. The recipe? Gather the raw ingredients, the major chemicals in emissions from tailpipes and smokestacks and feedlots, and pump those ingredients into the sealed chamber Next, turn on the chamber's bank of ultraviolet lights and bake for hours, as the sun would. Then, insert arms into the oven's built-in gloves and whip up meringues with a hand mixer. Twilly, Denfeld, and colleagues have taken their smog chamber and meringues to air quality tastings in New York, Paris, Geneva, and Leuven in Belgium, and to an art center near San Francisco, where I actually had some trouble detecting the smog flavorings. I wondered whether maybe most of the pollutants get absorbed and transformed by the egg whites or slowly diffuse out through the foam. Optimizing the smog meringue, it's a fine challenge for genomic, atmospheric, offbeat gastronomy.